This is the, and I'll say it's a bombshell. People can weasel their way out of the importance of this element. The Emergencies Act is the nuclear weapon of Canadian legislation to be invoked in the context of a national emergency, risk of war, overthrowing the government, etc. cetera, uh, to be used only when existing legislation is inadequate to resolve the issue. Uh, what was the bombshell uh, from yesterday? Oh my God, I'm gonna play you, I'm gonna play you Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson, what he said after this. Just, no, 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 no. I'm gonna play it first. So we can, so we can get an idea as to who, the, the nature of the people that we are dealing with. Jim Watson is the mayor of Ottawa. This is what Jim Watson, the mayor of Ottawa, wrote to Justin Trudeau in an email that I'm sure he never thought would see the light of day. Well, you know, in, in the practice of law, my father always didn't just say, he made me understand and made me live by. Draft everything as though one day it's going to find its way under the nose of a judge. Because it will. And if you do that, even if it doesn't, you're going to weigh your words and you will not be embarrassed with the things that you have said, thinking no one would ever see them. And I've got to take that back. I don't think that was my father. I think that was my first mentor. He knows who he is if he's watching right now. Um, if you draft everything as though it will be read, your email will be hacked, uh, it will be leaked, someone you don't like who you sent it to is going to use it against you. If you draft everything as though a literal judge or a metaphysical judge is going to read it, you will not make these types of egregious uh, lapses of morality. Or maybe it's just a lapse of, uh, it's just a moment of honesty. Jim Watson, mayor of Ottawa, represents all Ottawonians, not just the ones he likes. Listen to what he wrote to Justin Trudeau. And this is in their evidence. Yeah, you say, uh, well, the prime minister asks how you're doing. You say a challenge for anyone, everyone, still a pretty unstable situation. Nasty people out there that just don't represent Canada. Reminds me of the Republican Party down south. Can't reason with them. So vulgar and hateful, attacking people, ripping masks off, honking their horns. Yeah, you say, uh, well, the prime minister asks how you're doing. You say a challenge for anyone, everyone, still a pretty unstable situation. Nasty people out there that just don't represent Canada. Reminds me of the Republican Party down south. Can't reason with them. So vulgar and hateful, attacking people, ripping masks off. So th this might not have been an email or a text. This might have been the transcript of a phone conversation. Same principle. Can you believe what this, what this man just said to Justin Trudeau? And uh, Justin Trudeau's absence of a response. I mean, th these are two people, like-minded individuals, talking amongst each other in the most hateful, vitriolic uh, manner possible. And hatred and vitriol while accusing others of hatred and vitriol. Honking their horns. Yeah, you say, uh, well, the prime minister asks how you're doing. You say a challenge for anyone, everyone, still a pretty unstable situation. Nasty people out there that- Nasty people out there. Just don't represent Canada. That just don't represent Canada. Disagree with me? I write you off as not representing Canada. By the way, there's so few of them that it was a national emergency. Jim, maybe you don't represent Canada. Has that occurred to you? But can you imagine him speaking so honestly because he's speaking with someone who he views and is like-minded? But it gets nasty. Reminds me of the Republican Party down south. Reminds me of the Republican Party down south. C can you imagine uh, uh, the mayor of Ottawa suffers from Trump derangement syndrome? I mean, can, can you imagine that it's so pervasive? And by the way, we talk about TDS as a joke. TDS is just a, a sub variant. And I'm saying like a, a, a sub, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Embodiment. It, a materialization of an actual mental disorder. I mean, th there's a mental disorder that causes people to behave like this. It manifests itself. That's what I was looking for. A manifestation in TDS. TDS is just a manifestation of an underlying mental disorder, behavioral disorder, personality disorder, whatever you want to call it. Nasty people like those, Rep like those Republicans down South. Can't reason with them. So can't reason with them. Vulgar and hateful attack. Vulgar and hateful. 
after everything that this man just said, which is vulgar and hateful, he's calling them vulgar and hateful. People ripping masks off, honking their horns. Uh, yeah, they outrage. Hold on, sorry. They outrage over what they want conservatives to be, not what they actually are. They project what they think conservatives are because that's what they see every time they look in the bloody mirror. Nasty people. Eh? I'm a, this is going to be the outro for today, so you can at least have something to look forward to. Nasty people. I went back to watch some of my protest uh, uh, coverage. Nasty people. The word I'm looking for is convoy that, that is being severed from the main part in Parliament. And look, here. Right. nasty people. I came here yesterday. I actually came to sing a song on stage. And of course, to support the movement. Newt Gingrich. Oh, come on, Newt. Get out of luck. I have a warning to homeowners. <laughs> come on. The type of fraud you really need to worry about is home title fraud. And honestly, to be around other people. That's the main reason. I just want to be in a community and I want to be together and I want to see people's faces. Just like a Republican. It's very nice. It's just, the medicine, it, it, I, I, I've, I've, I've hugged more people today than I've hugged in. Boys, nice to see you. Nice um, to see you. Which way are you going down to the... I, I'm just checking it out. I'm taking some videos. I wanted to sing for some people. I don't know. I want to sing for a trucker. Do you think I can sing for a trucker? Uh, do you want to... It, well, no, I, I was going to say you could sing. I'm, I'm live streaming now and there's 11,000 people hold watching. On. Okay. Well, I don't want copyright issues. Is it an original? Um, It's Amazing Grace. So. Okay, people, wait for the end. I'm going to play it at the end. That was uh, Trista Souk. Trista Souk. I, I'm, I, I'm going to cry for... Uh, a tear up out of out of uh, happiness, joy. That was Trista Souk. Stay, uh, and I, I had never met her before. I'd never seen her before. I'm walking the first day of the protest, and I see this 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 woman walking around with a guitar, and like no, I know no, I know nothing of nothing. And then she says, "I want to sing," and I sort of I I said, "We're eleven thousand people." I didn't know if it was going to be atrocious. I didn't know if it was going to be. I, I, my fear was that. Shh, um, it was going to be bad. It was beautiful. And she, she's got a beautiful voice, Trista Souk, S-U-K-E. And um, she is the one that sang Amazing Grace with that trucker. That... She ended up singing on stage later. Yep. And so that's what we'll play at the end. Yeah. No, no, disgusting people, vitriol, angry, just like those Republicans down south. That's the mayor of Ottawa. Okay, so that's who we're dealing with. Now, remember what I said about invoking the Emergencies Act. What's this entire inquiry supposed to, to show? It's supposed to uh, give us the context, the circumstances surrounding the invocation of the act, uh, and whether or not it was a national emergency that warranted invoking the act. The evidence thus far, and you'll have to take my word for it unless you want to go back and watch all of it, but I have the receipts on my Twitter feed and in our locals community, vivabarnslaw.locals.com. We're now over 100,000 members, not paid supporters, members. And there's a ton of content for everybody out there. It's like Twitter without the trolls. Although there's a few, there's open discussion, but uh, not the anonymity and the unaccountability of Twitter. Although it's anonymous, but... It's a community, vivabarnslaw.locals.com. The evidence thus far has revealed what we all knew, or anyone paying attention from the beginning. It was an abuse of constitutional law. It was an abuse of legislative powers. It was an abuse of power. It was unwarranted, unjustified, immoral, unconscionable. And in the ordinary run of things, it would be the end of someone's political career. But Justin Trudeau has survived two ethics violations, three ethics accusations, Scandal after scandal, blackface, booby grabbing. He, he's, he survived it all. So why would, why would this sink him? In the ordinary run of politics, this would end someone's political career. Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act abusively, in my view, unjustifiably, in my view, uh, shredded the Charter of Rights, in my view, and he didn't have to. That's not so much in my view anymore. That, I think, we can say is a confirmed fact. There was discussion. They declared the emergency. They, Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act on uh, the 14th of February. On the 14th of February. We now have seen the evidence that we heard at the time, by the way, like this, these were the rumors, but not all of us are involved. And even those who are intimately involved can't necessarily disclose the facts publicly. 
at the time, the rumors were, the, were that there was a breakthrough in negotiations between the protesters and the authorities. Not just in Trudeau, because that coward fled Ottawa, refused to talk, negotiate, or even acknowledge the existence of the protesters, instead preferred to call them racist, sexist, misogynist, xenophobe, whatever. Not him. The, the tyrant is also the coward. Fled Ottawa after claiming to have had COVID, went into hiding in British Columbia. But the convoy, through its organizers, through uh, Keith Wilson, the attorney for the convoy, through Tamara Lich, who was subsequently jailed for weeks on end for mischief charges, rumor was that there was a breakthrough about to happen in settlement discussions, in negotiations. Then Justin Trudeau calls the Emergencies Act. Rumor no more. Rumor no more, people. Let's just get... Um, let me just get this letter. So this, no, 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 no. Don't you read that. Don't you read that. This is from Jim Watson. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. This is from Jim Watson, the man who has nothing but vitriol for the woman that he's talking to. Nothing, nothing but anger for Republicans. <laughs> Psycho. Uh, this is what he writes on February 12th. Tamara Lich, president, acknowledging her position of authority to represent the convoy, Freedom Convoy 2022. Ms. Lich, not dear Ms. Lich. Not dear. He's, he, he's, he's telling her. Jim Watson is setting the rules because now we know what an arrogant, hateful person that he is. This is how he talks to people. The protests in our city and the occupation of certain residential districts by a large number of trucks is now entering its third week. My overarching concern is for the safety and security of our residents. Safety and security, which after three weeks had not been breached or compromised whatsoever, setting aside the noise. Business owners and workers in the downtown core who are innocent collateral damage of this unprecedented national and international demonstration. It, it was international. It was embarrassing for everybody in, in, in Canadian politics. Our residents are exhausted and on edge. I can absolutely agree with that. And our small businesses impacted by your blockades are teetering on the brink of permanent closure. No, it could have been the year and a half of government imposed closure. It was the three weeks of protest. And by the way, Watson and everyone in Ottawa, no business had to close down. Those businesses, had they stayed open, would have done gangbuster business. They would have done gangbuster business. They didn't have to close down. They were told to close down. And the ones that didn't close down were punished by the authorities. Oh, but but oh, they're on the brink of permanent closure. No, they had just reopened after, what, a year of closure? Watson? Oh, no, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the year and a half of shutdown. It was the three weeks of protest, which brought more people to the Ottawa Corps than had been there in two years. Moron. Sorry. Moron. I don't believe these harmful effects on our community and its residents were the intended consequences of your protest. Oh, thank you. That's why I'm writing to ask that you remove your convoy and its trucks from all of our residential neighborhoods. Residential and that you restrict your presence to a limited perimeter from Wellington, that's on Parliament Hill. Elgin was on the side for anyone who watched my protest. I always parked on Wellington, parked legally, and drove up every day I went there. No traffic, no blood, no nothing. I drove up, parked my car in Elgin right in front of the subway, the subway sandwich place. And Sir John A. Macdonald, I don't know where that is. Uh, I guess that's on the other side. I don't know where that is. I ask that you immediately seek the support of the truckers to follow this path of de-escalation. Oh, 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 wait until you see her response. I would offer to meet with you to discuss the protesters as long as you respect the following conditions. Remove all trucks from the residential districts south of Wellington and from all other residential areas, including the market, Ottawa Stadium, yada, yada. Agree to not backfill the residential areas currently occupied with trucks, yada, yada. Agree to not displace the truck convoy vehicles or other to other residential areas of Ottawa. Okay, sounds, sounds, uh, sounds feasible. How do I close the damn picture here? Uh, where's the second part? I believe this is it. This, this, nope, close it. Damn it, stop it. God darn, Dave, come on, get your stuff together. I want to see clear evidence that the truck convoy will be departing the residential areas before noon on Monday, February 14th. Oh! Oh, well, that's funny. What happened on Monday, February 14, Jim? Trudeau, what happened on Monday? I want to see the, you know what this is called? This is called negotiating with bad faith actors. I want to see the evidence that you're doing this by February 14th. If I don't see the evidence, then we're going to, oh, what's that? No, let's pull the rug out from under your feet. 
I'm asking you to collaborate with local authorities to protect the adjacent communities of the car. Yeah. As the departure of 400 trucks from residential areas is a significant logistical undertaking that will probably take 24 to 72 hours from the 12th, we ask that protesters stop asking more demonstrators to come to Ottawa for the weekend in order to assist the truck convoy to depart the residential districts in a manner that ensures the safety and security of residents. I look forward to it. Blah, blah, blah. Copy that. Blah, blah. Okay. That's February 12th. That's February 12th of the same day. Response from one Ms. Litch. Dear Jim Watson, dear, you see that, you see that, you see that thing that polite people tend to do even when they're angry at each other? Although I, I actually would be more inclined to sincerely believe that that Tamara is not angry at anybody. Maybe she maybe she's angry now after weeks in jail. Dear Jim Watson, thank you for your letter. The trucks here in Ottawa have always been about peaceful protests. Many of the citizens and businesses in Ottawa have been cheering us on, but we are also disturbing others. That was never our intent. The Freedom Convoy Board agree with your request to reduce pressure on the residents and businesses in the city of Ottawa. We have made a plan to consolidate our protest efforts around Parliament Hill. We will be working hard over the next 24 hours to get buy-in from the truckers. We hope to start repositioning our trucks on Monday. As stated earlier, and Elena, we look forward to it. Yada, yada, yada. Please reach out if you have any questions. Freedom Convoy. Some, some of you will say, we're looking. We're going to get the buy-in of the truckers. So there's, there's no deal. Uh, others of you are going to say, there was an offer, there was an acceptance, and there was a window of 24 to 72 hours to implement the agreement. Because that's what there was. If they don't move by Monday, February 14, noon, I believe was what, um, was what he said. I want, I want to see evidence that this is happening by Monday. So there was no immediate do it by the end of the day or else. There was offer, acceptance, time frame to implement. What happens in that time frame? Oh, Herr Trudeau comes in, invokes the Emergencies Act for the first time ever in response to protests blockades. Here's a question to MSM. This was on uh, CBC. Hey, CBC, were you aware of the imminent settlement or the, uh, the accepted settlement and the imminent implementation of that settlement? Were you aware of that when, when this happened? Did you hold Justin Trudeau's feet to the fire when this happened? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Nate's in the house. Smith, Eva spitting the truth, vote Democrat. Spoiler alert. Uh, no, they didn't because they are paid propagandists sucking at Justin Trudeau's teats, sucking at the proverbial government teat, which is our taxpayer dollars. They had an offer put forward by Jim Watson that had a time frame within which to execute. There was an acceptance from Tamara Litch at best, or at worst, I should say, maybe with a conditional, we'll try to get the buy-in of the truckers, and we have a time frame to implement before the deadline could even be reached. The deadline to implement this accepted settlement in principle, in terms. Trudeau invokes the Emergencies Act. And he didn't just invoke the Emergencies Act, come in and bust heads. He invoked the Emergencies Act and then seized bank accounts. He, 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 there was a settlement. Oh, the, the protest would have gone on. It would have been concentrated to where I think it was concentrated to anyhow. No after having been embarrassed nationally and internationally, um, Trudeau had to come down with a fist of fear. Trudeau, who never once took a moment to discuss. Not only is he a coward who refused to enter into negotiations, he had to sabotage the negotiations that were being conducted among people. Good faith people? I'm not so sure about Jim Watson anyway. In fact, I'm sure that he's not a good faith person. Who, who, knows, what, who knows what else went on between him and Jim? We'll see. That's it. Invoke the Emergencies Act, crush the protests, freeze the bank accounts, shred the very fabric of a constitutional, a free and democratic society. Well done, Justin Trudeau. And if this does not end Justin Trudeau's political career, uh, what, what can you say?